I'm a dentist. I practice holistic, uh, reconstructive, and biomimetic dentistry in Encino, California. Biomimetic is just a fancy word, which comes from bio, meaning life, and mimetic means copying. So it's how we rebuild teeth rather than tear them down. And it sort of will be the wave of the future. It's not there yet, uh, but as a holistic pioneer back in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, et cetera, out here in Southern California, uh, I saw a similar uh, trajectory and parallel because back in the day, that was, oh, you do that kind of thing. Uh, that's, you know, frowned upon and, um, you know, it's kind of quackery or things like that, right? But we, it was all backed by science. Well, now fast forward over the years, now holistic dentistry is much more accepted in mainstream. It's even more accepted with traditional dentists. Like, okay, it's not frowned upon as some weird, strange practice. And then uh, Bamamedic started coming along actually in the late 90s, the early 2000s. And it is further based on uh, completely scientific literature that backs up how do we reconstruct and rebuild the tooth uh, from the inside out, let's say, after it's been broken down by severe tooth decay or trauma, et cetera. And that's all based on the science. So, so everything I've done has been based on the scientific literature, not just some cool opinion in the you know in the hallowed halls of uh having a poker party somewhere with a bunch of other dentists let's say um so anyway i've enjoyed that for many many years and uh helped a lot of people along that way and the whole idea is we want to actually help preserve teeth now rather than tear them down you know we had the history of doing crowns on teeth rubbing them, uh, I mean, grinding them down, um, uh, destroying 75 to 80% of the enamel structure and doing that. Well, that was a tool that we had. It's still a big tool for traditional dentistry, which is fine. Um, but there's better ways to rebuild the teeth. We can keep more tooth structure. People are living longer, for example. And some of this was interesting. Uh, years ago, I was talking to a a surgeon who does hip replacements and things like that. He said, you know, we first started doing hip surgery. Uh, we learned a lot about the accuracy of placing hip and hip implant, uh, hip implants and placements and things like that from dentistry, the digital aspect of dentistry. So dentistry, a lot of times leads the way in innovative ideas where other medical sciences further improve along that line. But he said, you know, back in the day, we would wait till a person was in their 70s before we would replace their hip because they wouldn't last that long. And, you know, they would generally pass away before it became a problem. So now they've figured out a way to do it better, less invasively, um, uh, that will last a lot longer because people are living longer. So it's the same way with dentistry and people's teeth. How can we rebuild them in such a way that we protect the precious nerve inside the tooth? So that if the tooth breaks down again, they're not going to lose the whole tooth or end up needing the gray area of gray areas in, in holistic field of dentistry, which is root canals. Mm -hmm. How do we avoid those things? And biomimetic dentistry and reconstructive dentistry using biomimetic and holistic principles seems to be the answer to that. Just to, in my practice alone, for example, years ago when I was doing traditional dentistry, I would have to do... Um, Maybe every day or every couple of days, someone would come in because they had uh, pain or discomfort from a procedure that had deep decay, et cetera. And it'd been no big deal. I'd send them across the street. They'd go get a root canal and they're out of pain. That was one or two or 30 or 40 or so a month. Now doing biomimetic dentistry, it's a handful, maybe eight or 10 a year that have to go through that type of procedure if, if necessary. So, so we know how to rebuild the teeth. We know how much a tooth, how much flexation a tooth has internally, how the hardness works uh, because we have these separate structures uh, built harmoniously within the tooth. We have the outer hard enamel, and then we have the inner material, which is called dentin, which just means in tooth. And then that all protects the precious nerve, which is like a mini brain for the tooth. It's kind of like a football 
football player's helmet. So they have the hard outer helmet, the soft spongy on the inside. And then of course you have uh, the, the, the skull and the, and the brain there, right? So the tooth structure is built in a similar way to withstand a lot of forces and a lot of pressures. So along the way, that's what we were doing now. That's what I've been doing as far as rebuilding and reconstructing teeth. Um, and I love it because I'm more of a sculptor and an artist working with my patients, and they're appreciative too, once they understand the concept. But then I thought uh, 20 years ago, I was looking at also, well, what can I do to prevent there from being uh, all this severe suffering on the planet? I mean, think about 50% of the people on this planet have, as we're talking, severe gum disease and or tooth decay that they're suffering from. And I thought, gosh, we can send people into outer space now. We have all this technology, but people are still suffering with uh, all of this. What's going on? Are they, are, are, are they just not brushing? Are they just not cleaning? And it's sort of a multifaceted thing where it has a lot to do with the change in nutrition, the high consumption of grains and processed foods, processed sugars, and things like that contribute to this uh, whole uh, debacle. But, you know, Years and years ago, before there was even refined sugar in our society, uh, grains, you know, people ate more of the uh, paleo type diet, let's say, or they ate the foods from the land and they survived quite well. And fossil studies show that they had very little gum disease and very little or no tooth decay. In fact, the kings and the queens of England suffered with tooth decay because they could get their hands on honey and sweet uh, items and things like that. The regular uh, workers around the, the castles, et cetera, they, they had good health. They just had poor conditions, living conditions. So I started looking at, well, what can, what can I do? So I, I formed a company called Great Oral Health uh, for the, uh, the listeners and, and uh, followers and viewers of the show, they can they can uh, look at the name of the company is Great Oral Health, and they can go to greatoralhealth.com. And I have a free uh, ebook that's there all about uh, the, some of the history of uh, dental situations, the history of dentistry, and also how people can take care of their teeth. And then along the way, I started looking at some of the holistic and natural tooth products that were out there, toothpaste, mouthwash, um, cleansing agents, et cetera. And I thought, gosh, they're not, the ingredients are not really that wholesome. They're not really that great. What can I do? So my daughter and I, in our kitchen, we started playing around with stuff. This is about 15, 16, 17 years ago, mixing ingredients and playing with things. Anyway, from there spawned the concepts of the great oral health uh, company, which I founded and formed. And then we also built in several of our patented products that are all natural, they're fluoride free, but they have ingredients that will actually help people uh, prevent tooth decay from coming in. And so we have a three pronged attack with that company. It's, it's basically, we wanna get rid of the bad bacteria that form because most tooth decay and gum disease comes from uh, a dysbiosis or, or the bacteria are unbalanced in the mouth. And what we, what we saw is that if we could balance that, people could come into health in the same way uh, that they're trying to balance the gut and trying to balance some of those types of things. And, and what we found is that I put together a seven-strain probiotic uh, specific for the ear, nose, throat, and mouth. And it was to help to bring about a certain balance because 2% of our population just doesn't get tooth decay or gum disease. Very lucky people. But we were able to isolate what are the main bacteria that they have in high amounts. And it's a certain type of bacteria. And that's been now isolated. So we were able to capture those and uh, actually can grow those types of beneficial bacteria and provide those to the regular public. So hopefully it can convert us 98 percenters to the two percenters as far as having a natural type of um, uh, microbiome in the oral cavity. And then funnily enough, we found that in using that, it decreased the amount of tooth decay. It decreases the amount of ear, nose, and throat infections and recurrence in children. 
So a lot of side benefits that started happening when we started balancing that out. So it's out with the, we, we want to go out with the bad bacteria. We have certain ingredients in an essential oil and toothpaste that takes care of that and, and eliminates all this harmful bacteria naturally. Um, the toothpaste is glycerin free. There's no sodium lauryl sulfate in it. There's no fluoride, et cetera. But there are beneficial ingredients like high concentration of alloy, al aloe, xylitol, et cetera, to help a person heal their teeth and gums. But at the same time, that was to bring down the bacteria, remineralize the teeth. But then what can we do about rebalancing the bacteria? So that's where the probiotic came in. And so it's, a, it's sort of a three pronged um, attack because I think we've seen it in medicine, we've seen it in dentistry and a lot of the uh, allopathic um, healthcare fields. We're great at uh, cutting it out, burning it out, uh, uh, getting rid of some inflammation, et cetera, but we just haven't figured out a way to restore balance. So the great oral health company is uh, pushing to help people, to empower them, to learn how to care for their teeth themselves, how to do proper brushing, proper flossing, and then what um, different ingredients they can use to help bring their mouth into a stable state um, with one caveat, if you have tooth decay, if you have gum disease, et cetera, you do want to work with your dentist to get that under control, but this will help it from worsening. This will help it uh, from coming back with stability. So those are some of the things that I've been working on for the last uh, number of years, joyfully with some success. Great. Thank you very much for that explanation. What are some other examples besides the, you know, the crown and doing that differently? And what do you, what do you do as an alternative to grinding the tooth down and putting a crown on it? But what are some other differences um, in the bio, bio mimetic dentistry, as opposed to the more barbaric, as you, as you call it, uh, traditional forms of dentistry? Uh, and it's mostly, it's looking at uh, uh, an individual holistically, you know, and if there's a way to rebuild the teeth with some gentleness and some predictability, we want to do it. And, and we found that there is a way and biomimetic dentistry can do it. So what exactly do we do with biomimetic dentistry? I mean, I, I have a whole uh, video series that explains that uh, anybody care to go to it. It's just called freeholisticdentalcourse.com. And it walks a person through from A to Z, from the anatomy of the tooth, the anatomy of the jawbone around a tooth, how it functions, its purpose, and all these kind of things. And then I show examples, and I show the difference between uh, cutting down a tooth for a crown, or now what do we do if we're not going to do a crown? Well, typically, the tooth breaks down with tooth decay, or it might even have a crack, but rather than grind a whole entire tooth away, we can sometimes go in, find where the crack is, go down and mend the crack by bonding it together. And then over the top of the surface of the tooth, the chewing surface of the tooth, we can lay what's called an onlay. It's a porcelain piece of material that lays on, that's why they call it onlay, on the top of the chewing surface. So it's sort of like a sandwich technique. We build the tooth up, uh, with many, many layers of um, a very compatible bonding that also flexes at the same rate of flexation that we have from the inner part of the tooth. Finding those materials and using those is a game changer because you have greater predictability of long-term success. So if someone comes in, they have tooth decay, we're able to remove it uh, carefully. We even use certain stains to make sure we're not taking too much uh, tooth away, or that we're on the opposite side, we're not leaving tooth decay behind because there's certain areas where we don't want to leave tooth decay behind. It will continue to spread, and and more on that in just a minute. But then we build the tooth up, and the reason we do it in layers, it was discovered if you do a little bit of bonding at a time, as you put most people that'll be watching this, you know, they've had a filling done, et cetera. So that if they're doing a white filling, the dentist goes in, drills, and he sticks something in there and puts a blue light on it. And you hear a beep, 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 beep. Okay, polishes up and he's done. <laughs> 